the last lecture which covered the topic on uh, behavior of uh, plastic uh, deformation in metal working we discussed the introduction part we discuss the crystalline structure of a metal and uh, we discuss how the different types of structures bcc fcc and uh, hexagonally packed structures could be and how these are arranged in layers we also discuss uh, dis uh, dislocation uh, we could see the 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 dislocation when uh, because of the external force when it is applied we could also see how the dis dislocation is responsible uh, around a uh, grain boundary which increases the load and the cold working under cold working condition and the strain hardening occurs we could see those things if you look into again starting from the last lecture uh, that if you if if we look into that at the higher temperature if you deform as we have seen the new strain uh, free grains nucleate and grow inside uh, the old distorted grains uh, at the at the grain boundaries that we have seen these new grains grow to replace the deformed grains produced by the uh, the, the strain hardening and uh, with the recrystallization the mechanical properties return to their original uh, weaker and more ductile states so that's how uh, one can see here in this uh, uh, slide that this is what the the recovery this is what's the recovery that the grains recover slightly from the cold working when you apply heat and uh, subsequently there is a recrystallization and therefore the new grains are uh, formed and then these grains grow and it becomes larger uh, uh out of the smaller grains which was initiated and one can see that the size increases you see here the smaller grains and then it increases so this is how the uh, because of the heat recovery then recrystallization and the grain growth take place and that that this becomes the basis for uh, metal working under hot condition one can see here because of the rise in temperature and as the recovery recrystallization and growth happens the ductility is going to increase there is a, a particular strength hardening and ductility the strength decreases hardness decreases and ductility increases and that becomes the advantage for metal working because in that case it requires rest less load for deformation and that is good for uh, in favor of the metal working uh, but as well as the internal residual stresses is concerned that reduces as well as so it goes in favor of the hot working so uh, let us see what is an alloy last time i discussed the alloy uh, if you look into the pure grains pure crystal and if there is some other uh element in the form of impurities or there is a mixture of more than one element we call it as an alloy so an alloy is a solid solution compound of two or more metals uh, or of a metals with one or more uh, 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 metal more components metals and alloys are virtually everywhere in our daily life alloys are used to make 
by aircraft engines, automobiles, bridges, buildings, and even uh, paper clips. The alloys, uh, bronze, brass, and uh, powder uh, uh, have been very much used since uh, long back in centuries. The properties exhibited by various metals are directly related to their internal micro and nano structure as discussed. Uh, when discussing a metal's atomic structure last time uh, and particularly which is in nano uh, meters, uh, Metals ions are held together by metallic bonds as discussed last time, in which each positive metal ion is packed together to form. Uh, ion is uh, attracted to the negatively charged uh, delocalized electrons. Positive ions in a metal can be packed together to form different crystal structure depending on how the ion are layered. When discussing a metal's microstructure, that is uh, in micrometer, a grain represents the smallest crystal that grow around the nucleus in all directions with a molten metal, uh, when a molten metal is cooled down. Where one grain meets another at the edge is called the grain boundary as explained last time. However, dislocations can be uh, present uh, which are defects in the metal lattice structure where a few ions in a layer are missing causing the nibrin layer to be displaced slightly to minimize the strain. The, the more grain boundaries there are the more difficult it is for the dislocations to move and for the metals to change shape. The result is that the metal suffers uh, uh, suffer uh, higher hardness, it becomes harder and it is also it becomes stronger. So in one respect the strain hardening uh, becomes increases the material properties and the example the case study study I explained of the copper. Uh, wire. So, uh, what is alloying? So, that means the only a few elements are widely used commercially in their pure form, like gold and all those. Things. But even though gold uh, that we see in market, it has certain impurities, which is desired impurities. Generally, other elements are present to produce greater strength, as I told to improve the corrosion resistance or other properties, surface properties are simply as impurities left over from the, uh, uh, the refining process. If you see some of the uh, alloys and their composition, basically one can have brass which is a very popular alloy, popular, uh, which is consisting of copper and zinc then bronze, another important, copper, zinc and tin, then uh, there is a, a, a pewter, pewter is an alloy, tin, copper, bismuth and antimony, cast iron is very popular alloy which is consisting of iron, carbon, magnesium and silicon, is steel is an alloy uh, consisting of uh, iron, carbon plus small amounts of other elements in the form of impurity. Some of the impurities are desired also uh, whereas the stainless steel if you look it is the composition of iron, uh, chromium, nickel etc. So the most alloys whatever we have seen are created to change the electric uh, uh, chemical uh, uh, sorry uh, the elemental metals physical property such as conductivity density 
ductility, hardness, luster, uh, uh, metallibility, melting point, tensile strength and or chemical properties such as resistance to corrosion. Alloy often exhibit increased strength and hardness therefore. So this is the what is the purpose of alloying. Uh, uh, precipitation hardening is a process, another um, requirement. Uh, uh, it's a process that can be used to affect the physical properties of an alloy, such as steel by introducing uh, copper rich precipitates, various treatment can be used, such as cold working or heat treatment followed by quenching and tempering a metal. As a result of such treatments, an alloy can uh, uh, demonstrate increased strength and toughness due to the, uh, 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 the precipitates being formed within its complex microstructure. Many mechanical properties of a uh, uh, precipitation hardened alloy can be analyzed on a microscopic scale using tensile testing, Chapi uh, test, V notch, Chapi, no, V notch test, and Weaker's hardness analysis, etc. So uh, it can be found out that because of the align and precipitation hardening afterward, uh, the properties improve, and one can test. There are several tests available. Now let us see. Uh, uh, how do metal uh, plastically deform? So, looking into the structure and the and alloy, uh, when we talk of the forming uh, and to understand later as the mechanics part of this, let us see uh, how do a metal plastically deform? Why do uh, forging changes the property? And why deformation occurs at distances is smaller than that of the uh, perfect crystal that we have already seen there is a crystal lattice different types of and uh, so uh, if we look into the uh, plastic deformation under shear stress one can see this figure where this is the slip line this is the slip line and uh, one see this is the external stress so the two directions opposite directions you see the dislocations. See, the red one, this is the dislocation and this dislocation is moving across the slip line. One can see and because of the shear action, see the resulting, the metal, the arrangement of the structure is becomes. So it has moved and it has moved across the slip line and therefore uh, 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 dislocation allow deformation at much lower stress than a perfect crystal. That's how the, the uh, answer to the first question. You can see the top crystal which is sleeping at, uh, at plane at a time. You can see uh, a, a plane can be here also, here also, but uh, this is the plane which is will result. And one can see the resulting one. This is how the things are getting deformed. So uh, the, the the top crystal, which is making one plane at it, one can see here again. This is what is happening. Uh, the stages, these three stages, have been shown in one only. Uh, so only a small uh, of the fraction, a small portion of the fraction of bands are broken. Uh, at each time. This is the only small fraction and this is pro pro propagation of dislocation causes top half of the crystal to slip in the slip line with respect to the bottom one. So this slip line, what is slip line is the, is, it's a crystallographic plane of dislocation motion. That's it is. Now if you see in 3D form, the, this shows the direction of the dislocation motion. Uh, there are uh, edge dislocation. So one edge passes, for example here, one can see that this is the direction of motion. So this is the edge, 
So this is called as edge dis dislocation where the whole line moves parallel to the applied instruments. This whole line moves this along the direction of the motion. And uh, this is called as the screw dislocation. It is uh, a, a shear stress, it is just like a twisting uh, one. So this is, there is a rotational shear stress. So in case of the screw dislocation, line moves perpendicular to the applied stress and therefore the mixed dislocations, that is the direction uh, is in between parallel and perpendicular to the applied shear distance. So this screw dislocation results into here slightly the state. And uh, uh, because of this, the strain is developed. If you look into the, the uh, because of this, uh, the strain field is developed around dislocation. One can see this is the this is the dislocation and this is the plane where the movement is there. So this will experience a compression. All these atoms uh, experience as a compression and below this is, uh, is a tension. So this is the notation of showing a dislocation. So a strain field from this torsion, this is, it is a distorted uh, at dislocations. Uh, drops radially with distance. One can see it, it is here. It is maximum. All these things, these uh, atoms will experience maximum strain, and then subsequently you move away. It is less. So edge dislocation, you have compressive tensile and shear lattice strains present. Whereas in screw dislocation, only there is a shear strain only. Uh, there are interaction between the dislocations. If you look into at this region where it is a repulsion, here it is a tension. So one can see that there is a repulsion. This is this side. Now uh, the, these strain fields around dislocations cause them to exert force on each other. So that's another development and uh, this is called as the direction of Burger's vector signature. You can then see here it is and here it is a repulsion, here it is a compression. So if you add all these together, this becomes the, in, as I told you in the perfect piston there is no dislocation. When you alloy or any kind of impurities occurs, then only dislocations are present. And so. Uh, this is the uh, what the signature uh, positive and negative and uh, as a result where do these dislocations come from as explained dislocation uh, it depends on the number of dislocation that is the dislocation density so uh, dislocation length and volume are the number of dislocations interacting a unit area is important that concerns the dislocation density. Around uh, 10 to the power 5 centimeter per centimeter square uh, in carefully solidified metal crystals to around 10 to the power 12 centimeter per square is heavily deformed metal. So you will see that uh, where there is a heavy deformation there is a uh, number of uh, that is the length oblique volume this ratio increases most crystal materials have dislocations due to stresses associated with the forming processes so uh, in which manner because this dislocation will create stresses and that comes into your permanent stresses and that has to be relieved and that's how the reworking in the form of heat treatment is required. So uh, this number of dislocation uh, uh, increases during the plastic deformation. Uh, uh, spawn form uh, from uh, 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 dislocations grain boundaries and 
surfaces. So uh, uh, this picture, it is a simulation uh, of the plastic deformation in a FCC crystal structure, copper. So how the things are getting generated, this dislocation one can see. So as far as the slip system is concerned, uh, the preferred planes for dislocation movement, we call as I told, is a slip plane. Preferred crystallographic uh, directions is called as the slip directions. And slip planes all together with its direction, we call it as a slip system. So, uh, higher packing density is uh, uh, increases the distance between atoms uh, shorter than the average, the distance perpendicular to the plane longer than the average, if you look into. Far apart uh, planes can slip more easily and particularly the BCC and FCC have more slip systems compared to the HCP, the hexagonally packed system, uh, uh, crystals. More ways for dislocation to propagate is FCC and BCC are more ductile than HCP. So one can see here that how the, uh, it's because of the structure itself, the movement of uh, uh, the, the dislocations and uh, come across. So uh, slip in a, uh, a single crystal if you look into this is the direction of force if you apply, so this becomes the slip plane and this is bound to slip around. So each step, one, two, like this, each step which is uh, because of the shear band results from the generation of a large number of dislocations and their propagation uh, in the slip system. One is this is the, for the zinc one has been shown here. And uh, resolving uh, the, the projections out of that uh, slip uh, uh, crystal, single crystal, uh, if you apply a stress onto the slip system, this location move along the perpendicular plane as uh, here it is being shown, as here it is being shown, uh, uh, this location move along the particular plane and direction in the uh, slip system in response to the shear stresses uh, along these planes and directions. And applied stress is therefore one can resolve it into two slip systems and uh, uh, the resolved shear stress if tau uh, r if it is there and deformation due to the tensile stress if it is taken as sigma. So this is the slip direction and this is the normal to the slip plane if, uh, to this particular plane and if you resolve into these are the two angles one can have this is the applied force there and therefore the, the shear stress can be calculated as tau cos phi and cos uh, kappa so this one uh, in a single crystal the uh, 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 it is resolved into the shear stress. So as the shear stress increases, crystal will start to build, that is the uh, dislocations start to move in a more severely oriented slip system. So onset of yielding, what will happen? The yield stress, that is tau y, that is uh, the, the minimum shear stress to initiate the slip. Once it overcomes the resistance, this is the minimum shear stress so that the slip starts. And then one if uh, the critical uh, result shear stress can be calculated as this one, which is the maximum. And one can then find out the yield stress in terms of the critical uh, result shear stress. And so maximum of this, this is this has to be maximized. The maximum of this will result where when both 
uh, angles are 45 degrees. So if you calculate this comes out to be 0.5 and therefore this becomes as the shear stress that is of uh, uh, if you put it so 2 so shear stress that is how the slip occurs first in slip system oriented close to 45 degrees. That is the reason uh, we when we conduct especially tensile tests or compression tests, we find this experimentally as well as and with respect to the applied stress. So this is what is the uh, with respect to uh, slip system and uh, with respect to the stresses that are there. The plastic deformation let us see of a uh, polycrystalline material as the grain orient the orientation with respect to the applied stress are typically random in fact uh, in a uh, metal. So dislocation motion occur along slip system having a proper slip plane with favorable orientation that is highest resolved shear stress we have seen and this is a microstructure which uh, uh, a microstructure which has been taken so one can see these are the the shear planes uh, uh, corresponding to different crystals within the so uh, the larger the plastic deformation corresponds to elongation of the grain along the direction of the applied stress one can see here this is the microstructure before and when you apply uh, vertically to this, these grains are uh, stressed, one can see it is these grains after uh, the load is applied and plastic deformation takes place. So this is after microstructure. This is another microstructure micrograph. Uh, so in the optical micrograph which is 1000 times metal alloy visible on microscope. So you can see the different uh, constituents of an alloy uh, and each has a, its grain boundary and uh, this is the SEM image which is 4000 times uh, which is on uh, micro scale again. Now uh, the same you, if you further you take the LEP uh, image, here you can see the metals and atom which is visible on nano scale, smaller than, so you can see all the atoms of uh, various uh, elements. Uh, so as the uh, plastic deformation work hardening and annealing, annealing is concerned, one of the question we would like to ask is why are the yield stresses of a normal polycrystalline metal sample uh, it is, uh, is so much lower by factor around 1000 than they are in a perfect crystal. There is a question. The answer has to do with the motion of the dislocation therefore that we have already seen. Uh, consider the, the picture that previously it was shown, which shows planes of the metal atoms near a dislocation. One can notice the dislocation movement by uh, breaking or making metals bonds. We have already seen. The key point here uh, is that we can in, uh, 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 induce plastic deformations by shear by breaking only one line of metal metal bond at a time along the dislocation line. Uh, this involves far less uh, force than the, uh, the breaking the entire plane of the bonds as we would need to uh, do to shear a perfect crystal. In a given polycrystalline uh, sample there, there are many dislocations and that run perpendicular to all possible shear directions. So their motion can be used to tear the metal apart. Uh, turbine rotors on large jets like DC uh, 10 etc. 
are made uh, of very expensive single crystal titanium alloy so that this shearing deformation can be avoided. So that's a, uh, inside it gives why a single crystal uh, requires lesser uh, deformation. If you look into a polycrystalline material, polycrystalline metals are typically stronger than the single crystal. Why? Because the slip directions vary from crystal to crystal. Some gains are unfavorably oriented with respect to the applied stress that is the cos phi and cos uh, lambda uh, is low this two multiplication. Even uh, these gains uh, uh, for which this value cos this, these two multiplication cos phi and cos lambda is higher is high uh, may be limited in deformation by adjacent grain which cannot deform easily uh, and therefore the dislocations cannot easily cross the grain boundaries because of the changes in the direction of the slip plane and the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, altered at grain boundary and that's how one can this is what the three, three regions where a polycrystalline uh, metal uh, experiences uh, is stronger, it requires more load as the single crystal. So then the question is uh, in metal forming the strengthening, how do you strengthen? So if we talk of the strengthening, the ability of the metal to deform depends on the ability of dislocations to move. So if you restrict, that is the restricting dislocation motion can make the material stronger, that is a simple way. So mechanism to strengthening in a single uh, phase metals, uh, one can think of the grain size reduction, one can solid solu uh, solution alloying and by strain hardening. These are the three ways one can strengthen the single phase metal and ordinarily strengthening reduces ductility that is has to be taken care. So when we deform our aim is that the ductility is higher but when you strengthen later by way of uh, heat uh, treatments and improvement in metal property we have to reduce the ductility. And these are the two planes of slip, line, uh, slip plane there is a uh, dislocation so grain boundaries, grain boundaries are barriers to dislocation motion and slip plane discontinues uh, or change orientation. So small angle grain boundaries are not very effective. High angle grain boundaries block the slip and increases the strength of the material and that is how you go for the high angle slip planes and therefore uh, if you can make it possible then uh, the strength increases. Another one to increase it, the strengthening by the grain size reduction, the, the finer grains with larger area of grain boundaries to uh, impede direction, uh, dislocation motion also improve toughness. One can see the, the Hall patch equation which is the yield stress where sigma 0 and ky uh, these are the constants for particular material and d is the average grain diameter one can see here this is the the yield strength and this is the diameter so this is for particular zinc base uh, brass alloy here one can see as the diameter increases the yield increases. So D determined by rate of the rate at which uh, solidification takes place, D determined by the rate of solidification and by plastic deformation and by the heat treatment. So these are the three things one can use it for uh, and another thing 
solid solution is strengthening the other way the alloys are usually stronger than the pure metal this is quite uh, known now so interstitial or sub interstitial uh, impurities causes lattice strain and uh, interact with dislocation strain field so hinder the dislocation motion that will hinder these impurities uh, will hinder the dislocation motion and therefore the impurities diffuse and segregate around the dislocation to find atomic sites more suited to their radii so reduces strain energy and ensures the dis dislocation so the motion of dislocation away from impurities moves it to region where atomic strains are greater you, you can see here this is what the impurity so when the, there is a dislocation here above compression and tension one can see how these atoms interact where the there is a uh, strain because of the the dislocation and one can use a solid solution instantly you add a solid solution by heat treatment or by way of some surface treatment so one can see that this will strengthen and how here it is one here it is two and if you add more impurities so smaller and larger substitutional impurities dif uh, diffuse into strain region these are the strain region around this location so this will diffuse here this will diffuse here leading to partial cancellation of impurity dislocation lattice system and that's how you come across to reduce so uh, looking into this one can now see that the basic structure of a metal a pure crystal then when the alloys are formed and when there is there is a there is a, a dislocation the type of dislocation and when the external load is applied on to a uh, structure that is within the metal if you look into the the crystal level grain boundaries and all those things the movement takes place so this lecture has been to uh, this will guide later when we talk of the mechanics part how actually inside uh, what is happening and uh, the effect of temperature and then effect of uh, we would be looking next the uh, the factors that affect the plastic deformation and uh, then the as far as the deformation is concerned the flow stress and friction and the other effect you will look, look into these are some of the list of the textbook that one can follow seven books one can follow to understand the uh, the topic which has been discussed here particularly the crystalline structure mechanic mechanism of the plastic deformation with respect to this structure and uh, therefore uh, the second lecture we will have i would like to thank you all for your presence and uh, i i would like again to inform you that you have uh, uh, this lecture there are objective question you can take up uh, at the internet and uh, you can improve upon by way of score that you obtained i will i will also request you Uh, that please do not forget to give your valuable feedback so that we can improve upon thank you thank you thank you both as uh, it was uh, shown uh, and these new crystal grains grow and uh, further the grains are formed uh, and therefore 
the strain hardening comes because these dislocation moves and it passes across a, a grain boundary and then it becomes difficult and therefore you require more load and that's the reason how the the cold working or the strain hardening takes place. With the recrystallization, the mechanical properties return to their uh, original uh, uh, weaker situation and more ductile states are formed. So one can see here that this figure, how the, the internal residual stresses, the hardness in, uh, decreases, strength and then the ductility increases. One can see the recovery and uh, the grain growth. One can see here the this is the different, this is the internal residual stresses. So, the recrystallization, particularly in hot working, it happens with a given range of temperature. For different alloys, the recrystallization temperature is different. So, 